Greetings, greetings, saints of God. We are back again. By the grace of God, we are back again. We thank God for the gift of life. We thank God for you that you have time tuned in. We thank God that he has given you another day, a wonderful day. So we are all glad that the Lord has given us an opportunity to meet together this evening so that we can study his word together. So we want to give him all the glory and all the honor for the life that he has given us. His mercy has carried you through and he has carried us through. His grace has been sufficient for us and his grace has been sufficient for you. Hallelujah. So we just want to give him all the glory and all the honor for giving us another opportunity that we can study the word of God together. You and me, those who are tuned in life and those who will tune thereafter, the blessings of God may be upon you as you listen, as you tune to this teaching. This is Destiny of Christians International Ministries coming all the way from Douglasville. And this is another Wednesday that we are going to study the Word of God together. Are you glad that we are studying the Word of God together? We are glad, we are happy that we can study the Word of God together so that we can get to know Him, to know the working of the Holy Spirit and be closer to Him and walk in obedience according to the Word that we are going to be taught. So welcome those who are tuned in from Kenya, Karibuni Sana. Those who are tuned in from Good Morning Africa, Karibuni Sana, Tunawakaribisha. And those who are tuned from around, wherever you are tuned in, we welcome you once again to Destiny of Christians International Ministry. I want to welcome the people in the studio. Thank you for coming to set up. Thank you for what you do. God bless you. And thank you for the testimonies that are coming up. Hallelujah. We have been receiving so many testimonies of how the people are getting understanding of the end times. Hallelujah. And they are how they are getting to understand the topics that are going on, where we shall reside after all this earth is done, where we shall go, our destinies, people understanding what is their destiny, and they are making decisions. Thank you for those who want to be baptized. Hallelujah. Go get baptized in water, and God will bless you. Hallelujah. So continue. Uh, those who miss our life teaching, you can go to our web you can go to our website or you can go to our YouTube and you can pick up all what we have been teaching or what we've been learning and you'll be up to date. Hallelujah. Once again, what wa good morning Africa, Karibuni Sana, Najoli Mapambazuko Uko, Lakini Karibuni Sana, Tabarikiwa Pamoja. I want to say thank you to our teacher who sits and takes a lot of time to study the word of God and to just make sure that whatever he brings is coming from the word of God and he has researched. So we want to say God bless him mightily. So once again, we just want to say welcome. Once again, this is Destiny of Christians International Ministry. If you are tuned in uh, for the first time, we always come live on Wednesday at 8 p.m. Join us so that we can study the word of God together. So I want to open with a word of prayer so that you can give the teacher enough time to embark on the topic that he has. He promised you about the topic today and he'll embark on it. So let's open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We want to bless you. We want to give you all the glory, Father, for who you are. Thank you for giving us your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for us. When we are yet lost in sin, he died for us. He loved us. He found us. And thank you for the blood that is shed that washes away our sins. Even now, my Father, we come together with the listeners, those who have tuned in now, and those who will tune there after, maybe weeks and months and years to come, those who will listen to this teaching. We come before you, my Father, and confess of every sin that we have committed, because your word tells us there is nothing unholy that can stand before you. So, Father, we ask you to forgive us because you are so merciful and so loving, Forgive us and wash us with the blood that was shed on the cross for us. And this night, my Father, we come covered by the righteousness of your Son, Jesus Christ, so that we can obtain mercy. Heavenly Father, I want to lift up every listener. We may not know their needs, but you know them, Spirit of God, you understand them. Tonight, as your word comes forth, as we study the word of God together, because your word is life, May the anointing that you are releasing from this altar reach them at their point of need tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. And as you bless them, my Father, do not forget us here in the studio. Bless us too, O oh God. Heavenly Father, we also take authority in the name of Jesus. We want to come against the spirit of the enemy. Every arrow he sends against us and against your people, we nullify in the mighty name of Jesus. Every demon that is harassing your people in one way or another, we bind them and command them to live and go to the bottomless pit in the mighty name of Jesus. And this evening we come covered by the righteousness of your son Jesus Christ, declaring that we are not losers, we are winners. We are not tails, we are heads. 
We are victorious in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to lift up the teacher as he comes, when he stands on this altar, Father, when he opens his mouth. Father, we are praying that you give him wisdom, you give him understanding and utterances that come from you, O God. We cover him with the blood of Jesus from the top of his head, the sole of his feet. And we want to declare for the devil to hear that you have called him tonight, you have mandated him for the ministry of tonight. So the word he's going to teach my father is your very word that has life and is going to touch us at our point of need. Hallelujah. So we cover him again with the blood of Jesus and we declare my father that the word will come forth with the power to set the captives free. Your word will come forth with an anointing to uplift those who are feeling low. Your word will come forth, Father, with the power to heal those who are sick in the mighty name of Jesus. For by your stripes, Lord, we were healed. Your word will come forth, Father, to comfort those who need to be comforted in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Your word will come forth, my Father, to open doors that have been closed in the mighty name of Jesus. So we are declaring tonight, my Father, the anointing from this altar will meet each one of us at our point of need and minister to us, O oh God. And at the end of it all, my Father, you only receive the glory. So tonight as we sit to listen, oh God, we pray that you give us a heart that is able to hear, a ear that is able to hear, and a heart that is able to receive as your word comes forth. I pray, Lord, as after we have been taught, we shall walk in obedience according to your word so that we can please you. Once again, we are grateful, Father, for giving us another opportunity that we can sit and be taught by your spirit, oh God. Once again, Father, we are grateful for this wonderful day that you have given us together with the listeners. So at the end of it all, my Father, you only receive the glory, Son of the living God. We honor you, we love you, we exhort you, and we glorify your holy name. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have prayed, and the people of God say, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Saints of God, believe with me tonight that as the word comes, as the teacher comes to teach the word of God, that word has life to meet you at your point of need. That word has life to touch you where you are hurting. That word has life to comfort you where you need to be comforted. That word has life to even uplift you if you are feeling low. So when the word comes, be ready to listen and the anointing of God that is releasing on this altar through, the, through his servant, meet you at your point of need. It is my joy now and my pleasure to welcome the servant of God to continue with the topic that he promised you. I'm sure you get yourself a book and get yourself a, a Bible, as we always say, so that you can compare what is being taught, you can read with us, and invite a friend and share this, uh, this, this ministry so that another person can be blessed. Thank you, and God bless you. It is my joy now to welcome the servant of God, none other but the founder of Destiny International Ministry, Chaplain Reverend Edward Karanja. The blessings of Christ Jesus upon all of you as you listen to today's message and we are listening as the Spirit teaches us. I would like us to turn to the Bible and let's go back to the beginning of the Bible, the book of Genesis. That is where the topic comes from. Remember as I promised I said we are going to compare the two trees, the tree of life and the tree known as the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So let's quickly look at Genesis chapter 2 and I'll read first of all verse 9. Verse 9 of chapter 2 of Genesis. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I would like you to jump to verse 16. It reads, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in that day 
You eat of it. You shall surely die. Our journey has started from the time we started the topic on repentance. We have come all the way and we have arrived at our eternal home, our everlasting home, otherwise known as the New Jerusalem, the holy city or the great city, which is going to descend from heaven on to the new earth. Remember that. We have investigated a few things in our home, our permanent home. We have found several interesting things. We have found that God the Father is there and Christ Jesus is there. We have talked about the river of the water of life. We discussed that last time. And last time we talked about the tree of life being found there. And it is at that point I said we will look at the tree of life and go back to the beginning in the book of Genesis and look at the other tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and compare the two trees. Hallelujah. So that is what we are going to do. We know in way of introduction that in the garden there were these two specific trees that God pointed out. One is of course the tree of life and the other one is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And we have just read a warning from God himself. You can call it a commandment. You can, you can call it a law. But he commanded or rather warned Adam that he must not eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God was very specific and said, don't eat that fruit from that tree of knowledge of good and evil. You already know that Adam through Eve, they went ahead and they disobeyed that single command and they ate the forbidden fruit. We also know that deadly uh, results followed. Very negative repercussions followed that single disobedience. And today, the human race is reaping the results of Adam and Eve's failure to obey one single commandment. The commandment they were given by God not to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The purpose of today's message is to establish one important thing and this is that the two trees, the tree of life and the tree of uh, knowledge of good and evil, they represent two choices or two ways of life. But basically, two choices are represented by these two trees. So the purpose of this message is to show us that there are indeed two choices. Even up to today, there are still two choices. Just like Adam was faced with two choices, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So even today, we are faced always with two choices. And this is what we are going to discuss this evening. So let us compare these two trees. First, let me talk a little bit about the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The key word there is knowledge. Notice God is saying the tree of knowledge of what? Of good and evil. Let me repeat that. Knowledge of what? Of good and evil. So it is basically knowledge. So we now know that we are talking about knowledge. Now the issue is this. What is the knowledge of good and evil? Have you ever thought about it? What is this knowledge 
about good and evil, if we understand that, we will understand why God forbade Adam to eat from the tree of the knowledge of, of good and evil. So what is the knowledge of good and evil? Now, the knowledge of evil, let's start there, the knowledge of evil, because there are two words, the tree of knowledge of good and knowledge of evil. So what is knowledge of evil? Ever thought about that question? What is the knowledge of evil? Because God is saying, here is a tree. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Don't eat from that tree. So, what is the knowledge of evil first? And then we'll deal with the knowledge of good. Now, basically, we do not need commentators to tell us. I have discovered that you can read many commentaries, but you really don't get it. I didn't get it. So I searched the heart of God and asked him, what is this all about? What is the knowledge of evil? What is the knowledge of good? Because you are calling this tree, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and you told Adam not to eat the fruit from there. What is the knowledge of evil? Basically, I want to share from you what the Spirit of the Lord has revealed to me as I studied and I studied these words, and I came to see that the explanation is in the words. We don't need to go outside the Bible to seek for commentators. They, it is their opinion, and I do not want to give an opinion. I would rather say what the Word of God is actually saying. So, what is the knowledge of evil? Basically, the knowledge of evil is the knowledge of disobedience. It is the knowledge of disobedience. Now, why do I say that? Because before, now listen to me, before Adam ate the, tree, the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, Adam had never disobeyed. Adam did not know how to disobey. Now, therefore, the knowledge of evil is knowledge of how to disobey God. It is disobedience. It is the knowledge of dis disobedience. Now, the knowledge of good is the knowledge of obedience, the knowledge to obey. Adam, before he ate the fruit, he already had knowledge of obedience. To put it another way, Adam had never experienced how to disobey God. He didn't know that. It was in him, but until he was tempted, Adam never thought of disobeying God. He only knew how to obey God until he received the suggestion from the devil about disobedience. So Adam knew only one rule to obey God. And you can see this is true because that is why the tree of life was not forbidden to him. Because he only knew how to obey, he was free to eat the fruit from the tree of life. Because the tree of life can only be eaten by those who have the knowledge of obedience. Let me repeat this because it is very important. Adam up to this point had not known how to disobey. He only knew from the time he was created, he only knew the knowledge of obeying God and he kept obeying and that is why the tree of life was accessible to him. I hope you get that point. But now, something then took place. When the devil came, he taught Adam that he can have the other knowledge. 
And the other knowledge is the knowledge to disobey. Remember, Adam has, had never disobeyed God. He didn't know how to do it. He only knew how to obey. But here is a proposal from the devil. And the devil is saying, you can know how to disobey. So when you hear about the tree of knowledge of good and evil, if you start with the evil, the knowledge of evil is the knowledge to obey, to disobey. It is the knowledge to disobey God. That is the knowledge of evil. Why? Because every time we disobey God, that is evil. You know that. That is why God has given us the word, so that we can abide by it and not swerve from it. So when we swerve away from the word of God, it is disobedience, it is evil. So any disobedience is evil. It is the knowledge of evil. And guess what? That is why we disobey. Because we were taught the knowledge of disobedience. Because Adam learned the knowledge of disobedience. So when you hear the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, this tree means that the knowledge of evil is the knowledge of disobeying. And there is also the indication that this tree represents a choice. The, the tree is saying there is the knowledge to disobey, but there is also the knowledge to do that which is good, that which is in obedience to God. So here we come to the point <clears throat> where Adam was attracted by the enemy to learn the knowledge of disobedience, and that is the tree of the knowledge of evil. That is the evil side. So the key word, as I said, is knowledge. Knowledge of what? Remember, Adam already had knowledge of doing good. That is why he was in the garden in the first place. And that is why the tree of life was accessible to him, because he only knew how to obey. But now, we have another situation when he is offered a chance to learn how to disobey God. So this is the knowledge of evil. It is the knowledge of uh, doing contrary to the will of God. Now, the tree of life, as I have said, on the other hand, it was still there. Adam was never forbidden to eat from this, uh, this tree, the tree of life. Now, the tree of life, as I have just said, can only be eaten by those who have the knowledge of obedience. So these two trees are telling us there are two choices. You can choose the knowledge of good, meaning you can stick to obeying God. That is the knowledge of good. Or you can choose the other side of the knowledge of disobeying God. So these two trees, they are representing two choices. You can either choose to be obedient or you can choose not to be obedient. That is what basically these, these two trees are telling us. What did Adam do when he was presented with these two choices? Remember, as I have just said, Adam already was accustomed to doing what God wanted him to do. He was actually living in obedience because he only knew how to obey. Although it was in him not to obey, he has never exercised that right. He did not have that knowledge of disobeying God. So all this time, from the time God created him, he only knew how to 
obey God. Therefore, he had the knowledge of good. He had the knowledge of doing that which is good. That is one choice he had. Now, but when the devil introduced this tree and the idea of the knowledge of evil, now Adam was faced with two choices. One choice was, well, I only know to obey God. He could have said, although you are telling me this, I am used to obeying God, so I will stick with the knowledge of obeying God. I will stick with the knowledge of obedience. But no, he chose the knowledge of disobedience. Because it was suggested to him, he deliberately chose to forget about his knowledge of obedience and he chose the knowledge of disobedience. I hope you got that. So instead of obeying God, he learned after eating the fruit, he learned the way of disobedience. Now that is the knowledge of evil. This is why the tree is called the tree of the knowledge of good and the knowledge of evil. There are two sides, the knowledge of good and the knowledge of evil. So next time you uh, wonder what is the knowledge of evil, it is the knowledge of disobeying God. It is the way of, of disobedience, the knowledge of disobeying God. Now then we have a, a little understanding about these two trees and why this tree was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We now know about the evil. It is gaining the knowledge of disobeying God. I want us to look at the implications of what I am telling you today. The first thing I want to emphasize again is this. Before Adam ate the fruit, Adam had the knowledge of obedience. Remember that. He only knew how to obey God. But now, after eating the forbidden fruit, he now learned the knowledge of disobedience. In other words, he now had the knowledge of sin, the knowledge of disobeying God, the knowledge of evil. Now he knew, he, he, he learned. So please notice, before eating the fruit, Adam only knew how to obey. But now after eating the fruit, a change took place. He gained the knowledge of doing evil. He gained the knowledge of disobedience. That is uh, the point. Now, let's look at this. God gave Adam a very strict command. He told him, Adam, I have given you freedom to eat everything here. Every fruit from every tree, even the tree of life. But... Do not eat the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's what God had said. But now, after eating the fruit, Adam now knew he could say no to God. Did you hear what I said? Adam now knew, although God had said you should not do that, now Adam now learned that he could actually say no to God. He had never said no to God. But now, after eating the fruit, he, he knew he could say no to God. What was the deception there by Satan? What actually did Satan um, tell this man to the extent that Adam chose to do this, to choose the knowledge of disobedience. What made him desire to learn the knowledge of disobedience, which he didn't, he didn't do before? 
Now, this is the bait Satan put forward. Satan was actually telling uh, Adam, you do not need God. That is the point. You don't need God. That is basically what the devil was tempting Adam with. Uh, the devil was telling Adam, not only that, you can be like him. You can actually be like God. In other words, the, the devil was very clever. He was putting the knowledge of disobedience. So at this point, uh, the devil put out the bait and told Adam, you know what? You do not need to obey God. You can be like him. Now, you know, Satan himself, he used this strategy when he desired to be like God. Read from the book of Isaiah chapter 14. When he says, I will ascend to the mountain of God and I will be like the Most High before he was cast out of heaven. That was his desire. He wanted to be like God. Now listen to what now he is telling Adam. You can be like God. Now, that is the bait, that, that is the uh, temptation that he was putting forward to uh, Adam and, and Eve. You do not need God, you can actually be like him. In other words, instead of God making decisions, you can be the one making decisions. That's the first thing. You don't need God to be making decisions. You can be the one making decisions. Secondly, you do not need to obey what God tells you. You can be like him. Now, you know all this is what some people even today are deceived of. Many are deceived by being told, according to Psalm number 86, Psalm number 86, and verses 6 to 7, the, the, the verse there in Psalm 86 says, you are gods. Th that's what the, the verse says, you are gods. And here, the devil is actually telling Adam, you will be like God. You are, you can be God yourself. Now, there are people who believe they are small gods. But then, they forget to read the whole of that scripture, particularly verse 7 of Psalm 86, that says, well, even if you call yourself gods, well, you are still going to die like men. In other words, you are still human. Hallelujah. Even if you call yourself a small god, you are still subject to death. You are still going to die like men. Now, these two trees, therefore, they give us two choices. The choice to obey. The choice to keep the knowledge of obedience. And there is the other choice, the choice of the knowledge of disobedience. In other words, these two trees are telling us that the whole issue of humanity in relation to God is actually about obedience and disobedience. So the issue is this, when you, uh, when you think about these two trees, the issue comes to this. Will you stick to the knowledge of obeying God or Will you go astray like Adam did and go the way of the knowledge of disobedience? To put it another way, is it God's will or your will? Actually, the whole thing boils down to that. Whose will are we going to abide with? Is it our will or is it God's will? 
If it is our will that is the knowledge of evil. The knowledge of evil is the same as the knowledge of disobedience. It is knowing that we can disobey and actually disobeying. That is the knowledge of evil. Doing that which displaces God. Doing that is not right in the eyes of God. So you notice these two trees, they are telling us something very, very vital about the relationship between the human race and God Almighty. And the key issue is this. Which knowledge are you going to stick with? Is this the knowledge of disobedience which is equal to the knowledge of evil? Because once we disobey, we are doing evil. Or are you going to stick to the knowledge of obedience? In other words, is it obedience or is it disobedience? That is basically what these two trees are actually uh, signifying. Now, every day, you and me, we are faced with these two choices. Even today, many of us, we have been deceived in one way or another. We have actually followed Adam by choosing the way of disobedience. We have actually, in a way, continued to eat the fruit from the tree of good and evil. And in eating it, we are not even doing the good we have chosen to go by the knowledge of doing evil. We have gone ahead and followed the way of disobedience. Now, the way of disobedience is the way of the knowledge of evil. So today, if you reflect and see what did you do contrary to what God wanted you to do, Maybe some of you, the Lord wanted you to go and pray for somebody, you didn't do it. So what did you do there? You chose the knowledge of disobedience. Maybe I was meant to go and do something for somebody, but I didn't do it. Deliberately, I knew I was supposed to do it, but I didn't do it. I did not do the good I knew I'm supposed to do, but I chose to do the evil. It is the same thing. We are actually continuing the disobedience that was in Adam. So every day we are faced with this choice. Is it obedience or is it disobedience? Is it the will of God or is it your will? How many decisions have we made today that are according to our will? It's according to what we want. In other words, we have become the bosses. We have become the decision makers. We are the people who are now saying we will do, the, we will do it this way. While God is saying do it this way, we have become a people who are now in that position of saying we will do it this way. That is what Adam did. That is what we have been doing from the time of Adam. And until that habit is broken, we will continue to do the same thing Adam did. We will continue to make wrong choices because Adam made a terrible mistake that affects every human being. So today, ask yourself, what is it the Lord wanted you to do but you didn't? On the contrary, you did the opposite. So, like Adam, we are faced in a way by these two trees again. So, which tree are we going to, uh, to eat from? Are we going to stick to the tree of life? Or are we going, like Adam, to choose the tree of the knowledge of of evil. That is the question. It faces believers every second and it faces the world. It faces every human being and at the end of it many many people 
we have chosen the way of the knowledge of disobedience. That is something that is sub, uh, expected to sober us, to make us think, what are we doing? Have we taken the place of God? Have we accepted Satan's bait that we will be like God, that we will be the people who are making decisions and just follow them through? That is the point. Now, the good news. The good news is this. The tree of life is still available. That is why in the last message I gave to you, in the New Jerusalem, the permanent home of Christians, we came face to face again with the tree of life. Meaning, the tree of life is still available. We do not have to wait until we go to our permanent dwelling place. That tree of life is still available. And from the book of John 3.16, you can access to that tree of life. That verse, as, as most of you know, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believes should not perish but have eternal life. We are talking about life, meaning the tree of life. In other words, God is so merciful, he has given us a chance and said, Well, the tree of life is to you available. Anyone who desires to eat the tree of life, you only to, you need to believe what I have said in my word that I sent Jesus Christ to die for the sin of the world. What sin? It is the sin that has followed us from the time Adam ate the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He chose the evil, the knowledge of evil, and that is the seed that is in every human being. We are still choosing to eat from the tree of, the knowledge, of, of knowledge of good and evil, and God says, don't eat from that tree. But the good news is, God has offered a chance to everyone. And he says, the tree of life is accessible. You only need to come to the Lord Jesus Christ and say, Lord, I know where I have come from. I know I am like Adam. In all my life, I have made choices that tell me very clearly I am of disobedience in everything I do. Lord, I know Every time I make decisions, they are not pleasing to you. Every time I'm going against your will and I am doing my will, therefore I come to you and ask you to forgive me for that kind of life. And now I'm turning my life to you and ask you to forgive me and cleanse me with the blood of Jesus Christ and make me your child so that at the end of, of this life I will still have access to the tree of life in the new Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Now, finally, let me remind you that every negative decision we make, every action of disobedience because of the knowledge of evil, because we have learned to do evil. That is the knowledge. We have come to the point where we desire, this body desires to do the evil. Now, because of doing that, we have to remember that every activity that we do that is an act of disobedience has very disastrous results. Anything that I do according to my will and not according to the will of God always has negative repercussions. When you go back to uh, the verses I have just read, particularly from verse 16, we are told the results 
after Adam disobeyed the commandment of God, after he chose the knowledge of evil, the result was sickness. That is why we get sick. The, the, the result was physical death. That is why we die physically. And more than that, spiritual death. Because at the end of it, at the end of this life, there is the second death. Now the second death is not about the physical body. It's about the resurrected body. So we, we lose when we go contrary to the word of God. Again, we know from the verses I have read, and if you read the, the, those chapters of Genesis about the fall of Adam, we are also told one very important thing, that the ground was cast. Because the ground was cast, that is why we work so hard. And many times the earth refuses to yield. So next session, we are going to deal with this negative result, the curse on the ground, because God cast the ground. What does it mean to you and to me today? Are we perhaps going through some things and maybe it is all related to the fact that Adam disobeyed and the ground was cast? That is what we are going to investigate before we finish our tour of the New Jerusalem, the holy city, the permanent home of every child of God. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord uh, cause his face to turn to you and keep you in peace. May the Lord continue to be your good shepherd. May the Lord release his favor on you. And may the Lord continue to touch you according to your needs. It is in Jesus' name I have prayed. So may God bless you now, and we will see you again next Wednesday, God willing. And we are going to look at the negative results when the ground was cast. Because even today, the ground remains cast. God bless you.